Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to be talking about COVID-19 or the coronavirus. Um, we talk about this because it is having a substantial impact on the global economy, which is also uh, going to have some effects on, on cryptocurrency as it is a speculative asset and people tend to liquidate speculative and highly risky assets during a, a recession. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna try to take some key points away from it. Look at the the growth rate. Try to talk about the seriousness of of the growth rate, um, and proceed from there. So if you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel, uh, and also check out this Telegram channel here, which you can also find a link to in the description below. If you wanna you know dive into the stuff, dive into the charts, and talk about it with a lot of other people. We have actually the group's been growing quite. Uh, rapidly itself, we're almost at, or we're above, say, 2,100 members now. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, we have, here we're just looking at a linear scale, so this is the total number of cases, um, confirmed cases. Obviously, this is a lower bound uh, because a lot of people either don't report the cases, you might not be able to trust the data, or people can't get tested. Um, so there's a lot of reasons to not necessarily treat this as absolutes, but rather a lower bound. Um, so you can see that China, you know, went through this exponential growth phase, and then it has leveled off. Uh, that's what the data says anyways. Um, but everywhere else in the world, we're still in this exponential growth phase. And in fact, we've recently crossed the number of cases that China had. But this is everywhere else in the world. Um, and the key question is how long are we going to remain in this exponential growth phase before we level off? If we look at a, an exponential fit, this is actually um, a few days old, but if we look at an exponential fit, you can notice that our, our y-axis is now a logarithmic scale, so we would expect a, you know, a constant slope for exponential growth on this logarithmic scale, so this is you know, uh, 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, so on and so forth. And we fit this to a to an exponential fit of y equals a times the ex, uh, exponent of b times x um, uh, a week or two ago. And while we only fit it up to, say, some data points over here, it has continued to, to, to be accurate in terms of predicting, if you were to extrapolate out, where the number of cases would be. Um, and if we were to extend this out, you can see that we would cross some of these key milestones in not the so distant future. And if we add on the most recent data points since my last video, you can see that they fall directly on the line. So, it, you know, so far it does seem to be a pretty good predictor of the growth of the total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases. Um, so with this said, if we continue growing at this rate, we're going to hit 0.1 million or 100,000 confirmed cases in everywhere, you know, we're not including China, we're just including everywhere else. We're going to have 100,000 cases in, in just a couple days, just a few days. We'll hit a million cases sometime the end of March at this growth rate. Now, obviously, the goal is to get this to, to ultimately level off um, so that we can, you know, contain the spread of the virus so that the hospitals don't get overwhelmed um, but there are already are places where they're running out of room or they already have run out of room and say like the ICU and it becomes problematic because then you have to decide, you know, you have to make tough decisions on how are you going to proceed if you have 10 people that have COVID-19 but only, you know, uh, five rooms for, for people or say five respirators or whatever it might be. At that same growth rate, if it continues growing at the same exponential rate, we would hit 10 million cases in, say, um, around mid-April, maybe just shy of mid-April. So the reason why this is, why I'm doing this is not just uh, to, to put, you know, to just put fear out there. It's to, it's to make you really understand the growth of the virus so that you can take it seriously. Because if, if everyone can start taking it seriously and do things to, um, you know, try to prevent the spread of it, then it, you know, it really could make a difference. And, and some people think that, well, I'm young, it, it doesn't really matter. Well, you have to consider that, you know, you could be carrying the virus and it might not affect you that much, but it could easily spread to other people who it could affect. And that's one of the reasons why the virus has been hard to contain, because a lot of people are actually asymptomatic, but are still carrying the virus. Uh, so do take that into consideration. Um, 
so I, you know, the, the, the fact that it's growing this quickly and growing all around the world and we're seeing the numbers explode in, in many different countries it is somewhat concerning. And, you know, we're, we're, we hope that the world can get a handle on this soon because you can see that if it doesn't and we continue this growth rate for just another couple months, you know, we're going to be exceeding 10 million cases. So we really hope to get this under control and to start leveling off so that, you know, sometime in the foreseeable future, the, the economy can get back on track. If we were to look at the daily growth factor, so from one day to another, um, you can see that uh, we're, we're basically, you know, we started off way up here at close to two, um, but ever since then we've mostly oscillated between, you know, 1.05 to 1.3 or so. Uh, so obviously, as long as we're staying above one, we're still going to grow it. We're, we're going to keep growing exponentially. If we can either get to, you know, get below one, then that exponential growth is going to start to decay. So that is important. We're going to be looking to hopefully get this below one at some point soon. If we were to look at the doubling time, so this is the amount of time it takes to see a um, see the number of cases go up to x. Then it, at first it was only two days, and then it went up to around eight days, back down to four, and then now we're we're oscillating between say four to six days. So every four to six days, the cases the number of cases is doubling. So if in everywhere else in the world besides China, let's just round and say there's approximately 90,000 cases, then that means within a week or even less than a week, we're going to be at 180,000 cases at this exponential growth. So just bear in mind how quickly it can grow and how quickly some of the comparisons that people make between other diseases could quickly get outdated if, if this growth rate continues. Um, we can also look at the quadrupling time. So this is the amount of time it takes to go up 4x. So if, if we have, say, 90,000 cases, and it takes, uh, let's say it takes 10 days, but somewhere between 8 to 10 days to go up 4x, let's just say 10 days, um, then, you know, we're looking at 360,000 cases within 10 days. And, and the reason is that, you know, the reason is because we're obviously seeing this exponential growth, um, because each person on average is is transmitting it to say um, to, to, to several people between I think they're I think it's between two and three or something but everyone's um, transmitting it uh, but of course we will that will decay in and of itself because the idea is I mean if you if you're around a certain amount of people some of those more and more people are going to already have the virus so then you can't spread it to them uh, so that's something to consider as well so some key points. Uh, I assume most people are following the news, but if you're not, you know, there's been a lot of closures around the world. Schools are closing, small businesses are closing, uh, large businesses are, are closing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of large corporations that are closing their stores. Uh, a lot of people, or a lot of, a lot of, or some cities are setting curfews. Uh, other cities are basically, you know, quarantining themselves. Even countries are, are closing their borders. Uh, for instance, in the U.S., they've, you know, if if you're not a U.S. citizen and you're coming from Europe, you can't really get back to the United States um, for 30 days. So there's a lot of closures going on. This is obviously going to slow down the world economy. And the, the, the question is, how long is it going to slow it down for? And ultimately, how will the markets react? Because, you know, we're not really sure. I mean, it, it seems like we're heading into a recession. The question is, is it going to be a supply or demand shock? type recession, like are, are we just not going to have the supplies that people need to, you know, people, there aren't going to be as many cells because uh, there just isn't isn't the supply if supply chains are getting disrupted, or is it going to be a demand shock where the demand isn't there? And I think it's going to be a combination of both because for certain things, uh, people are buying up like crazy and, you know, there's a huge demand, um, but on the, other, on the other hand, there's also a supply issue because people, you know, there's a lot of manufacturing plants that just aren't aren't in operation in, in an attempt to, to mitigate the spread of the virus. So because of this, there's a lot of job losses. I mean, there's even people in the Telegram group that we have that are already reporting that they own small businesses and, and you know, they're having to lay off people because they just can't afford to, you know, they can't afford to, to, to pay because, the you know, they're not bringing in any money. And you can't just, you know, you can't just continue to pay people indefinitely because you don't have the money to pay them. Uh, that is an issue with, with small businesses. Um, 
Uh, and another thing recently that, you know, the, the Fed cut the interest rates to, to between zero, or I would say zero to near zero, and uh, the, the Dow futures, the Dow Jones futures actually responded negatively to that, um, and it triggered a limit down, which is uh, at, f at negative 5%, it basically said, okay, you can't trade any more below that because we're limiting it, to, it's limited to 5% um, in a day. So obviously the Dow Jones reacted negatively. Um, so, you know, that doesn't necessarily bode well for, for, um, when, when the Dow Jones, um, opens tomorrow morning. Uh, so, you know, if, if, if the Dow Jones and these traditional, uh, markets continue to take the plunge, then it's going to be hard for, for Bitcoin, I think, to not also follow suit in a sense, because, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily a coincidence that Bitcoin dropped 50% in one day at one point. Um, while also, you know, traditional markets have been dropping 20 to 30 percent from their all-time highs over the last few weeks. Um, and another thing that, you know, a lot of people, because we do mainly focus on cryptocurrency, you know, Bitcoin is currently below the 200-week moving average. It's not really that far below it, but we are keeping an eye on it. Um, so the 200-week moving average is around $5,500, and as, as I'm making this video, I think the price of Bitcoin is, is around 5300 um, so, you know, we could see the 200 week acting as resistance. Obviously, it, you know, it rebounded strongly earlier from the news, from the, the interest rate cut from the Fed, but then it went up to like $5,900, but then it came back down fairly quickly. Um, and, and that, you know, that could also be because futures opened as well. So, uh, you know, in general, it is, it is certainly, you know, it is certainly a risky time to be entering any markets right now, uh, just because of how uncertain the, the global economy is going to be over the next several months. But, you know, it also, from a mathematical standpoint, the risk is low, but that's also not taking into account any fundamental factors like a, a potentially seeing a, a global recession. So we're going to keep, we're going to continue following the coronavirus, COVID-19. We're going to hope that we can see this growth level off so that we can start to be more optimistic about the economy getting on track. Um, but until then, you know, there definitely is going to be a lot of volatility in the market just because people are going to continue to be uncertain about what the immediate future holds if businesses all around the world are continuing to close down in an attempt to, to reduce the spread. So, you know, I hope you guys like the content. If you do, please subscribe to the channel and, and also check out the Telegram channel in the description below if you'd like to discuss, uh, you know, cryptocurrency, traditional markets, if you want to discuss COVID-19 or other factors that, be, that could influence the markets, then feel free to do so. Uh, and, and please subscribe. So I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.